I saw the young madam to her chambers. She is utterly exhausted. What do you expect? As if being captured by goons and tossed into prison wasn't exhausting enough. She learned her brother died too. She apparently heard of Klein's fate when she was taken. She is surprisingly calm given the circumstances. Jude, how's Mila? She was fortunate to have someone with medical expertise nearby. And your healing arts were a real boon. They helped stop the hemorrhaging. She has lost a great deal of strength, however. These next few hours will be crucial. Please, get some rest, everyone. I'll take good care of her. Shouldn't you rest as well, Doctor? You've been using spirit arts all day. You must be exhausted. Now hold on a second. I can say the same of you. The young man can handle this. Please, Doctor, this way. Is everything going to be okay? Mila's gonna die? She'll pull through. I know she will. You all should get some rest, too. I want to help, too. If it's okay with you. Thank you. This isn't my specialty, so I'm gonna turn in. Okay. I wonder what they're talking about. It would seem the worst is over. Yes, she's breathing normally again. I think she'll be okay. Now it's your turn to get some rest. Just as soon as I tell Elise and Alvin. Oh, there you are. Thank goodness. Now we can thank Mila for the jailbreak! Yes. Where's Alvin? I'm not really sure, now that you mention it. I'll go find him. And with that, welcome everybody back to Let's Play Tales of Zillia. In the last episode, we completed Fort Gundala and we learned of Mila's fate. She is not doing so well, but as of right now, she's recovered a little bit. But now our task is to find Alvin! <laughs> uh, but yeah, I know the last couple episodes were kind of weird. I have to do make a confession. I did go back and fix the little issue I had in the last episode, which I accidentally activated DLC and was immensely overleveled. But I went back and did that. Um, as soon as we get back our party members, I will go ahead and distribute Lilium Orbs appropriately. So, with that, I'm about level 19 in the last episode. I think I was level 18, 17, 18, somewhere around there. So if that's what you're wondering, if you wanted to see if I did any, uh, if I did any, like, catch-up properly, that's why. But we need to go find Alvin. Alvin should be over here, if I do remember. Over here somewhere. Either that or he's in the end. Wait, did it come over here? I don't know if Poppin worked with my favor. New, no, I must be thinking of later, because we do come back to Sherilton later. We have to do the same exact thing. Where am I? <laughs> Mila! 
you're awake. You're in my manor. Do you remember what happened? Yes. I attacked Noctigal, and then... Thank goodness. Stay in bed. I'm gonna call the doctor. Doctor? What doctor? That's enough tests for today, young lady. She's stable and alert. I think she'll be fine for now. What happened to Jude and the others? Are they okay? Miss Elise is downstairs. Jude went into the city to look for Alvin. You must be famished, Mila. Yes, you should eat what you can. You need to regain your strength. I'll order something hearty. Let's head downstairs. <gasps> What's wrong? I can't move my legs. Alvin, good news. I know. She's out of the woods, right? Uh, yeah. How'd you know? It's written all over your face. Hey, have you ever heard what folks call this city? No, not really. The city of hails and farewells. It's a waypoint for travelers. They stock up on supplies here before heading out. And people returning from a journey unload their surplus goods here. I couldn't have picked a better place. What do you mean? That woman I was chatting with. She's my new employer. Huh? You're bailing on us? Why risk my life to accomplish someone else's suicide run? That's no way for a mercenary to make a living. Mila's just trying to complete her mission. What about my mission? Any idea what it might be? What? How should I know? I don't know either. Does anybody? How many people do you know have a mission in life? One they're willing to risk their lives for? <sighs> What's your mission, kid? I just want to help Mila. That's all. Fine. Nothing wrong with that. You could help her too. I'll swing by to say goodbye before you all leave. And unfortunately, it looks like Alvin has completely bailed on us. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to go head back to Cheryl Manor and kind of tell everybody the bad news. And as you guys can see, and farewells, huh? <laughs> day uh, it's now evening time. <laughs> Man, they were in there talking for a long time. But uh, anyways, let's go back to Cheryl Manor kind of check up on Mila and tell everybody about Alvin's fate. It seems like Alvin is going to be leaving off to do more mercenary work. Floor window is open. That means Mila's awake. Yeah. What's wrong? There's something I should tell you. It can't be. How much time has passed since I let him get away? I can't stay here any longer. Mila! Your legs! Yes. No tingling, no pain, no anything. <sighs> Jude, 
Where's my sword? Don't be ridiculous. You have to rest. I have rested long enough. I must get to Fenmont. You're still going on about your mission? That's all over now. Don't you get it? What gives you the right to make that decision? Decision? Don't be stubborn. There is no choice here. You don't have any strength left. You can't even walk, let alone wield a sword. You have to accept reality. Jude, do you remember the people of Hamil? Huh? They were forced into a situation they didn't choose, and they didn't have the strength to fight against it. Well, yeah, maybe things would have turned out differently for them if they were stronger. So what is strength exactly? Is it something you wield to fend off attackers? Is it something you use to control the four great spirits? Is it something that lets you walk on your own two legs? It's none of those things. Not real strength. You just won't give up, will you? I can't give up. My mission won't let me. I must keep moving forward. Even if your body won't move at all? That's who I am. <sighs> Oh, good morning. Is something on your mind? It's just that a long time ago, my father healed a patient who had lost the use of his legs. Really? Yes, really. So I was thinking we could visit my hometown, La Ronde. What changed? You were so determined to hold me back yesterday. I was... I don't know why. I'm not sure what changed. Huh. If you say so. I just know there's nothing I can do to stop you. Even if you can't walk, you'll just crawl away and get into trouble. <laughs> you really are... A do-gooder? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm in your hands. Right. We can reach Laurent by boat. So let's head to Sapstrath Sea Haven. Drissel, you have my gratitude. And you have my hopes for a full recovery. Please take the utmost caution on your journey. I'm truly sorry we cannot accompany you. No need to apologize. You have much to keep you occupied here. Drissel's life is about to get very busy. She'll need your guidance. Yes. You're really leaving? Yeah. Take care, okay? You don't have to worry about being lonely anymore. Drissel and Rowan will keep you company. I know, but still... We should get moving. Everyone, you've been a great help. I'm in your debt. Time to hit the road. Thanks, all of you. Super pals, don't split up. We stay together forever. I hope we get to see them soon. So, we're really continuing on. <sighs> so be it. And now, things have changed. Uh, one thing in particular... Oh, well, we gotta <laughs> skit here. Let's just listen to this. Jude's hometown. I'm eager to see what your hometown is like. It's just a normal little boondocks town. It did used to be a famous mining colony, though. Since you're human, you must have parents. Are they a lot like you? I don't know about that. Aren't you looking forward to seeing them? Hmm. 
My parents tend to prioritize work. We don't always get along. I've read about child-parent relationships. There's something called an Oedipus complex? I'm pretty sure that's not it. Ah, so yours is more of the scheming, backstabbing sort of family? Exactly what sort of books are you reading? I can name a few. Hamlet, perhaps. <laughs> I'm actually just making a joke there. Uh, Oedipus Complex is completely different than what <laughs> Jude was trying to go off of. That was weird, kind of hearing that the first time. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Um, anyways, uh, we actually have to go back to Sherilton, because there's actually a couple sub-events that open up to us. But I kind of want to show you guys. Mila's accompanying us, but she can't fight. This is all Jude right now. We and also, if you're playing Mila's story, you'd be controlling Jude. You'd be you wouldn't be able to fight as Mila, which is completely weird for her story, but it makes total sense because, well, Mila doesn't have use of her legs. But uh, right now, we're actually going to go back to Sherilton because there's actually a couple sub events that pop up after this, and they immediately go away if you pursue any further in the story. I'm actually going to go ahead and drop off some feathers here. Uh, sure. Uh, actually, let's see how many we got. We got 123, so we're making good progress on that. That's good. But, as of right now, like I said before, you are in control of Jude. Controllably, for like, I want to say a good 5-10 minutes. So you're fighting by yourself, um, unless you're going doing what I'm doing and trying to get all the sub-events. But we actually have to go back to Cheryl Manor. Because there's two sub-events that pop up as soon as you leave Lorond. Or not Lorond, you leave Sherilton to go to Lorond. So, let's go up here. And if you come over here, you'll see Elise is playing with Tipo. Let's go ahead and talk to her. Mila! Jude! You're back! No, sorry. We're just stopping by. Oh. Okay. You got me all excited for nothing! <laughs> Tipo seems to be back to his old self. Yes, thanks to you getting him back for me. But now the team's all broken up. There's nothing we can do about that. Rowan and Drusel are too busy to play with us. I'm so bored! Things have been hard since her brother died. You're not supposed to be selfish now. But I just can't stop! Have you guys seen Alvin since then? No. He said he had another job, and we haven't seen him since. He's a heartless jerk! Don't say that, Tipo. Work is important to adults. Then you play with us, Jude! You're not an adult yet! B well I, uh... I said no! Jude has to help Mila heal! I'm sorry to leave you all alone like this. Don't worry about me. I have Tipo. Look how brave she acts! Ellie's all grown up, too. Tipo, be quiet. <laughs> yes, I see what you mean. And that's actually kind of one of the reasons why Elise is my favorite, one of my favorite characters in this game. <laughs> there is so much character develop development with her, and I love it. But uh, anyways, the second uh, sub event is all the way right here. Come into this room, and we talk to Drusel. Now, this event you can completely skip this. Until, I want to say, a little bit after, I want to say about maybe three or four or five hours at uh, more gameplay. This doesn't um, go away until you go to a certain town later. But I might as well get it out of the way because it's open to us now. Let's go ahead and talk to Dursel. Oh, hello there. You seem to be in better spirits than I had expected. Oh yes, I'm fine. Better than I had expected myself, honestly. I guess I'm used to it. Even before this, Klein would often go away for months at a time. He had become the head of a family after our parents died, so he was always running around taking care of things. He really worked hard to help everyone in the city, didn't he? He really did. That's why I can't help but feel that one day, he'll just come waltzing through that door. He'll say, I'm home, Drusel, like it's no big deal, and leave a bag of souvenir candy at the table. He always thought he could cure my bad moods by bringing me candy. But 
I just liked eating them together with him. Dracel. I'm sorry. I know my head is in my head that he's gone, and he's never coming back. I think my heart will catch up soon. The human heart obeys no timelines. True, but I'd like to think Klein gave me this time as one last gift. Oh, I didn't mean to skip that. I want him to know that I'll carry on what he was trying to do, and I mean it. You're very strong. No, I'm just repeating what I've heard before. That's exactly what Klein used to always used to tell himself after our parents died. I actually kind of really like that because it's just... It's very real, if you know what I mean. Like, losing a sibling like that, especially an older sibling, it must be really hard. I know I've lost a lot of family members in my lifetime, but it was just... That, that's just hard thinking about something like that. But we've actually got another skit. Different paths. I hope Elise doesn't get too lonely. She has Rowan and Dracel with her. You don't need to worry. I wonder what Alvin's next job is going to be. I hope it isn't anything too dangerous. He wouldn't last long as a mercenary if you turned down dangerous work. <laughs> you really are a worrier, aren't you? It's not that. I just wish we could have all stayed together. This was inevitable. We all have different duties. Cheer up. We'll see them all again. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's... Jude's kind of like a lot of... Like me. If anybody knows how I am, I'm, I'm a really big worry wart. <laughs> that's why I can relate to Jude a lot, and that's why I like him as a character. But now, we can actually go on our merry way to where we were supposed to go, which was Shap Shap Sea Haven. To catch a boat. <laughs> I know it's just like this gigantic side trip right now, and it seems like this is kind of silly thinking about it this way, but we're actually now going back the way we're supposed to be going. Sabstrap High Road. Now, now that we've actually can go through this without any military checkpoints, we can finally get that last I freeze treasure that we missed along the way. Now, new enemy types come up. I think these boars right here are the new enemy types. So I'm going to go ahead and do a battle because we haven't done battle yet in this episode. But like I said before, you are all by yourself in this uh, scenario right here. So you have to just be mindful of that. So make sure that you don't die. That's all I can say because you're the only one that's in charge of yourself. So, you didn't get very much experience from that. But I kind of figured because... They're kind of on level with all the other monsters in this area. Oh, look at... Uh, oh, okay, cutscene. It's about to pour down on us. Better call it a day. Good idea. How did you become such an amazing cook? I can't even boil water without burning it. That's not true. Anybody can become a good cook with practice. Everyone has their own mission. <laughs> so you're saying my mission is to cook for Mila Maxwell? Well, in my current state, I can't even do that. I can't make dinner. I can't even make a bed anymore. Don't... don't worry. I'll do that stuff for you from now on. <laughs> hey. Sit closer. I want to thank you. Please, take this as a token of my appreciation. Thanks.
And now we have acquired a new item, it's Mila's Pendant. If you remember from Mila's cutscene, when um, Drissel and all of them were in town, she kind of showed that off. But she just flat out just gave it to Jude just now, so that must mean something. So, without further ado, let's go on to Sabstrap High Road. Further into it, I mean. We should reach the Sea Haven sometime today. Glad to hear it. So now we have to go up and beat up a boar that kind of knocked us off our high horse, quite literally. <laughs> I always liked that, that was funny. But just simply kill the boar, and then continue. Mila! You okay? Sure, I'm fine. But now what? Hold tight. <laughs> and now Jude's just determined to get Mila over there. Uh, before we do that, let's get this skip before this monster comes over here. Elbert the Conductor. Fighting alone really makes you realize how fortunate we were to fight by people like Rowan. I can't agree more. It isn't every day you get to ally with Ilbert the Conductor. What's the reason behind his nickname? They say it's because he gains full control of the battlefield. He once crushed three armies in a single day. The battle was called the Priscilla Miracle, and it helped create the Rashigal we know today. I could tell he was no normal man, but I had no idea that he was such a famous tactician. It was such an incredible honor to fight beside a living legend like that. And how might it feel to fight beside the Lord of Spirits herself? Hmm? Did you say something? Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> She's like, well, what makes him so special? You got to fight the Lord of Spirits yourself. <laughs> I love that. That's so funny. Um, but anyways, um... I love the little cutscene. It's just like, Jude's determined to get Mila to her destination. So he's like... All right, piggyback it is. So, <laughs> anyways, let's go ahead and kill these stupid bees and frogs. Okay. Come on. Die, frog. There we go. <laughs> but, actually, one little thing that that cutscene kind of taught us is it's supposed to teach you about these crawl spaces, but you would have done this, like, already. Like, that one actually had 2,000 gold in it. That's actually really good. But you would have done this already by now. And it's just like, okay, that's kind of a late tutorial. And it's not really a tutorial. It just kind of shows you saying, hey, Are look, okay? looky here. If they start to hurt, just say so. Thank you. I appreciate it. Inside this treasure chest is more life bottles. We don't need those. Uh, but, yeah, th that kind of shows you a little tutorial that you can actually go into crawl spaces and collect treasure that way. But, it's so late, it's kind of like, it's just necessary, we've seen crawl spaces. But let's go ahead and uh, climb up this vine here, because now, now that the military checkpoint is gone, we can finally get this, <laughs> get this gosh darn thing, it's right here. Hello, I freeze treasure. Inside is black dog ears. So now you have it, <laughs> now you can get that and whatnot. Let's go on this crawl space here. And there's absolutely nothing in here. That's just fabulous. Um, let's go get over to Sapstrap Sea Haven now. So, first there's treasure to be had. Let's go ahead and grab those real quick. Inside here is more gold. That's always good. More money. More money, more money, money, money. Inside this treasure chest is... Hard scale. Okay. Some more material for shops and stuff. No, Mr. Frog, you're not going to get me today. Okay, so let's go ahead really here. Odd. When you carry me on your back like this, 
I can't help but remember flying with Syl. <laughs> playing piggyback here and visible meal on Jude's back because game doesn't want you to do that just in case you run into battle. Just like, you gotta put Mila down to battle. But now let's go in to Sapstrap Sea Haven. Let me go check on the ship's schedule. I'll be right back. Lady Mila! I finally caught up with you. Ivor, what are you doing here? When I saw your face on the wanted posters, I knew I just had to find you right away. But what about your duty to protect Nia Kara? I begged the villagers to let me come to your aid. They were very understanding. You imbecile. That's not the point. Don't you realize... Ugh. Lady Mila, are you okay? Your... your legs. Mila! You! Tell me what you've done to her! Stand down, Ivor. This wasn't Jude's fault. I brought this upon myself. But you wouldn't be in this predicament if I'd been by your side. Listen here, Pipsqueak. Handmaids are made, not appointed. One must dedicate his life to serving and protecting Lady Mila. It is an esteemed position for real men. Manly men! She may have commanded it, but clearly it was a mistake to let an uncouth, unreliable, underhanded stranger like you serve her holy person. Now, come with me, Lady Mila. Wait! My father might be able to heal her legs. If what you say is true... I will be the one to take her to see him. I've had you pegged as a phony from the moment I laid eyes on you. Now know your place and be gone! You can accompany her if you like, but I'm coming too. <clears throat> Ivor, stop this nonsense. Please, Lady Mila, stay where you are. You will thank me for this later. How dare you allow this to happen? I... Shut up! I don't need to hear your excuses! I tried! I said shut up! It's time for you to pay for your sins, you bastard! And now we are fighting Ivor, Mila's handmaid, and as you guys can see, he's level 17, and he doesn't play around, and we're playing all by ourselves with Jude. So this is actually a boss fight that we actually have to beat with only Jude, so be careful when you do this, because things can go really ugly really fast. Now, there are a couple of battles that are like this in the game, so be mindful of that. And he's beating the ever-living piss out of me, so let's go ahead and just keep wailing on him. His weakness is wind. Luckily for me, I did put um, the wind weapon on Jude here. So, we're actually going to go here and use an item because I am running low on health. Let's go ahead and use this here. Ow. Stupid razor edge. I'm gonna beat you up, Ivor. This is for you being a stupid imbecile. <laughs> Go ahead and use some demon fist here to kind of weaken him up a little bit. And this is hurt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, so let's go ahead and use up another item because this is ridiculous. Um, actually. Let's go ahead and use an elixir because this is kind of one of those situations that I need to use the elixir here. Ow. This is messy. I hate fighting this by myself. But there we go. We have defeated Ivor. Pretty good. For a phony. Call me whatever you want. I just want to help Mila. How many times do I have to tell you? That's my job! Lady Mila! I don't have time for this. You two can duke it out as much as you want. I'm leaving. I'm sorry.
If you still aren't satisfied, I'll fight you again later. Right now we need to get moving. Huh. Ivor, I have something very important to give you. It's crucial that no one else gets their hands on it. Consider it as precious as my life. The lives of the four are counting on it. And you're entrusting it to me? I shall defend it to my last breath, Lady Mila. I knew I can count on my handmaid. Now, return to Nia Kara. What? Your duty is to protect Nia Kara. But Lady Mila, my place is with you! Don't make me repeat myself. G hurry up and take her. But don't forget who's the real handmaid. This guy! Uh, sure thing. And I promise, I won't rest until Mila walks again. You got that right! And now, after that little climactic fight, oh my gosh, we can actually talk to Ivor and he says, Listen, phony, your life will be forfeit if you allow Lady Mila's legs to get any worse, even if it's just a scratch. You hear me? You'll be a dead man, even if she just catches a cold, or has a runny nose, or gets seasick. Damn it, why are you still here? Hurry up and take me Lady Mila to get healed. <laughs> <laughs> Always like that. That that fight in particular, it was kind of one of those that caught me off guard when I first played, and I was like, oh, I'm fighting Ivor. But um, anyways, let's go ahead and talk to the Seahaven guy here. It says, go to Laron Seahaven. Are you ready to go? Yes, I am. <laughs> 